one of the things that I'd like to uh, make the audience aware is that people who come in for cataract surgery are interested in spectacle independence. So they will automatically jump and ask for multifocal lenses. You will seldom see a patient who will ask you for a toric lens. So unless your counseling uh, practice, either from the surgeon side or from the counselor side, is going to introduce the fact that there is astigmatism, how it degrades vision and how it uh, the toric lenses can correct that thing, you will find that uh, your toric uh, IOL acceptance rates will be very low. Uh, we were generally going by a not very aggressive uh, technique and we found that nearly four, 500 uh, lenses of multifocals were implanted in 2013-14. Uh, and uh, at the same time when we looked at that out of 8,000 eyes, we had only used 67 toric lenses because our counselors were responding to uh, patient questions and then uh, going uh, by suggestions beyond that. So now we are uh, trying to say like, okay, see, you have got astigmatism, this astigmatism is significant, a toric lens uh, would be a lens which will give you certain benefits and then taking it from there. Some people accept it based on the uh, uh, information given, some people decline it based on the cost uh, challenges. But the fact remains that about 20 to 30 percent of patients have more than one and a half diopter, one 1.25 uh, diopters of uh, cylinder and approximately 10% uh, have more than two diopters of cylinder, and this is on the cornea. So visual the counselors need to have images like this to sort of give them an uh, idea as to what is the kind of quality degradation, and uh, without that, the patient is not able to understand the concept. Multiple toric lenses are there in the market. It's confusing for all of us. And what I'm trying to do is to sort of introduce the lenses that are there and share with you some of uh, the lenses where I have had uh, personal experience using it. So I have not used the star, but it is important from a surgical perspective because this is the first toric lens introduced and it's a plate hapsic design. It had, uh, once there was fixation, uh, the anterior and posterior capsule had fused, there was good uh, rotational stability, but there was a high incidence of early rotation in the bag and uh, it required a fairly large corneal incision. And obviously all toric lenses need to have a perfect intact rexus and uh, intact zonules. The second uh, is uh, a local uh, lens, which is the Auroflex. It's a dual haptic design, very similar to the Rayner lens. It has got a rot fairly good rotational stability, 360 degree posterior square edge to reduce the PCOs. And uh, it is a preloaded lens, which reduces uh, haptic damage and uh, lens damage during uh, loading. Uh, the rotation, the calculation for all this is based only on the anterior corneal toricity. The toricity on the lens is on the anterior surface alone. This is very similar to the uh, Rayner, and both the Auroflex and the Rayner are hydrophilic lenses. Uh, the Rayner lens is supposed to have a patented anti-vaulting haptic technology and uh, reduces the uh, effect of compression with better rotational stability. Again, long-term stability, sometimes you find that uh, these haptics tend to fold over, and so there's a small question mark over long-term stability. The one where I have had the maximum uh, experience is the Alcon Acrisoft lens. And this is a single piece aspheric acrylic uh, toric with the stable force haptics with the slightly L-shaped uh, haptics. The toric surface is the posterior toric surface. And uh, it is all of these lenses come associated with the negative aspheric captation of uh, minus 0 0.20 uh, microns. And uh, it requires a 2.2 millimeter corneal incision. The uh, the lens also contains the yellow pigment uh, to reduce uh, long-term macular damage. Uh, significant capsular phimosis can reduce the late uh, uh, lens stability, but probably in my personal experience, uh, this is uh, the one where I have uh, noted long-term best results. The AMO thickness is something that we have started using more recently and uh, 
this is again uh, very similar to the uh, Alcon lens, 2.2 millimeter incision. It's excellent fixation within the cap capsular bag, good uh, uh, centration and very good uh, torsional and uh, rotational stability. Same compressional issues as in the uh, toric lens. So if you look at it, most of the lenses that are currently available, uh, the old ones are smaller diameters, plate haptic lenses, these are less fashionable now. The uh, hydrophilic uh, lenses are 2.5 usually and uh, some issues related to rotational stability. The hydrophobic acrylic 13 millimeters is uh, uh, having probably the highest range of diopters also and uh, probably going through a reasonably small incision and giving very good results. Uh, more recently, I became aware of a newer lens and the logic for this newer lens is uh, based on this. So most toric lenses are, uh, sorry for that spelling mistake there, uh, designed for the emetropic eye, where a hyperopic smaller eye, the IOL is slightly large for that bag and there is possibility of vaulting. In a myopic uh, larger eye, the IOL behaves smaller and that there is a uh, potential for a rotation. So uh, this I myself have not used, but I'll show you a video of uh, my colleague who has used this one. This is a customized toric lens where the effective lens position is optimized based on the measurements you send to them. There is no need for rotation. Basically, uh, the toricity on the anterior posterior surface is introduced based on the lens being placed uh, horizontally only. And uh, it is customized to an individual eye to ensure that there is a predictable refractive outcome. Unlike uh, several other customizations, this uh, takes only seven days to uh, make the lens and deliver it to you sterile. So uh, <coughs> this is uh, something that uh, we find very interesting. I'll just uh, run the video. Okay, so this was a patient with a corneal uh, uh, one of the relative contraindications that Dr. Arup had just mentioned. So corneal pathology underwent uh, a penetrating keratoplasty and post keratoplasty uh, the refraction was plus 7 minus 12 diopter 624 best corrected refraction. You can see that there is a fairly uh, regular bow tie there and uh, 14 diopters of astigmatism on the cornea. We observed for some time, ensured that there was a stable refraction, graft host junction was uh, healthy and uh, healed well and that the specular microscopy was acceptable. So when we tried to go uh, for a toric IOL calculation, there was nothing that uh, matched this. Uh, the company care group was happy enough to customize this lens for us and uh, gave us a uh, lens. Uh, this is uh, refractive data that is entered into the uh, uh, calculator. You also send uh, the Lenstar readings to the company and then they use it to customize using the white to white, etc. And uh, this is what uh, was the lens that was uh, delivered to us. Sorry. So this is. Uh, 13 diopter cylinder plus 21 lens. So pre-operative marking this again will be covered later, but this is how Dr. Himanshu does it on the slit lamp, uh, vertical and horizontal axis. Instead of a marker which tends to sponge, he tends to use a, a small needle to make a small neck on the edge of the cornea and the limbus and uh, intraoperative axis marking. And then of course, uh, uh, being a PKI soft shell technique, uh, Rex is, uh, is completed. Soft cataract, phaco aspiration only is required. The lens goes in aligned to the axis and that's it. So the potential degradation because of uh, rotation is reduced because of the haptic uh, quality which sort of centers it well. 
and pre and post op image is more or less the same no induced astigmatism specular is same and the uh, eye trace images show that uh, there is gross distortion initially but it is compensated by the uh, lens so uh, this is the corneal distortion this is the internal and uh, negative uh, the two negate each other and this is the total eye which has got a reasonably good quality of vision there. Thank you.